Today, we're going to look at a feature of the Global Hub Operator that extends ACM search in a global fashion. I'd like to hand this over to Joy Deep. Hey, thanks, Brad. So the last time, if you guys remember, in the previous sequel, uh, or in the previous video, we, we ended up with this picture. So this is showing the a typical telco deployment where we, we are showing the VDUs at the far edge, and then we are showing this uh, VCUs and MEC and whatever. And then we have the core sites as well. And imagine these three different things are managed by three Red Hat uh, Rackham uh, clusters. And managing these three is the global hub. And uh, Jorge, if you can uh, flip to the next one, th this gets even better. So Kashif actually gave us a sample a deployment to play with. So uh, uh, we have the uh, we have three different ISVs here. Acme, Fu, or two different Acme, Fu, and Acme in different states, cities, zip code, and the workload is uh, uh, identified there. And this will map to what Jorge has physically deployed in the pods as well as the hub. So, Jorge, why don't you take over? Yep. So, let me start by describing you know, what I have the data that I put in my clusters. So, now I have this topology, what we showed in the previous video. Now I have a global hub at the top managing uh, managed hub A and B, and these ones have managed clusters underneath. So I went, you know, like the east region uh, maps to hub A and the west region was map to hub B. So that's you know, like uh, separates there the east and west into different hubs. And you now I went and created uh, this, uh, all these deployments to to put data on, on the clusters and now we can show that we can go and use search to ask questions about these workloads here I'm at, at the global level so now search is became global search and it has data from all my managed hubs and the managed clusters underneath so so you're seeing data from the fleet all across the fleet here correct Yes, so from here, we can go and look for different data about my my clusters. I have some predefined safe searches. That's very useful if you're always looking for the same things, but let's go and do one live. You know, like if I want to look at all the uh, ISVs that are of type foo, I can just do it by deployments. And now I know I put the label ISV type. And I get the option, so I want to see all my full ISVs. So no, I click here and we see that there's uh, different workloads from my hub A, and we should see some from hub B or not because of the data that I have. I'm sorry about that. The data that we have, uh, it's uh, all the foos are yeah. on region A. So, so yeah, yeah like we only see one region. So we can, maybe we can switch back to the other ISV type. Uh, so I have this, the Acme ISV type. And in this one, we do see that some of them come from hub A and some of them will come from hub B. And we are managing these by labels. Kashif, that seems reasonable, right? That's how we would normally do. In the that, is, that is phenomenal. Basically, what you're showing me is uh, I can go to a single management platform and see all the RAN workloads that I have either split through region or the, or the type of the ISV that I use. So from vendor one or vendor two, um, I can can I also do a drill down and see all the DU workloads across both of them or? Sure, you can uh, query the data in any way you want. You know, like if you want to see only the Agni DUs, so we can uh, come here and look for I, uh, the DUs. So now these are all the ISV type, Agni, and the use, where you can query the data as you need. Um, one thing I want to point out, you know, like 
these are the deployments. If you really want to go see the pods, you can look at the related resources. We see that these deployments are deployed across two different clusters, and we can see which clusters are those. And we can actually drill down into the pods just using the relationships that we compute. And we can go into any of them and access uh, the pod information from any of them. Let's just pick a random one. And it will take me to that uh, ACM hub. And from here, I can see the, the pod YAML. And I could look at the logs. Uh, in this case, just a dummy. Uh, PC box uh, workload, so it doesn't have anything interesting, but you would see the logs from here. So, Jorge, what did you just do? You went and you uh, we were looking at a pod. You went and clicked on the pod, and it actually took you to it took you to the uh, hub that is managing that pod to drill down further. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. That is phenomenal. And the clusters, by the way, when you showed. The clusters, they are in fact uh, the regions. So if you have one region for one cluster, you are lo looking at all the, the regions in there. So the two clusters you have are for region east and west, right? Correct. Yeah, going back to the topology. Yeah. So uh, hub A and hub B that relate to east and west. All right. So, ba so basically, you're showing. You're showing a single pane of glass view for across your fleet. However many sites you have, you can drill down to each individual zip code, for example, if you want to see what's in deployed at the 90210 zip code, you can drill down and check over there uh, as to what DUs are deployed there. That That is phenomenal. That is. Yeah, we can see that example. Uh, these are my. I can start with all my DUs and you know, what zip code did you want? Nine to go to Malibu. L let's let's take a look at the cell sites in in Malibu, I know two one oh. The most famous zip code in the US. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this drill down to you now we have two DUs running on Malibu. It's interesting, Kashif, how you translate our search language to your telco language. We are doing labels and parts, and you are, you are talking in terms of your zip code and ISVs and things like that. That's interesting. Because that's the practical application of this, right? If you want to see how many DUs you have in a particular zip code where you want to apply uh, some sort of a, of, of a patch or, or just to get stats from, this is very useful. The global search is the technical um, aspect of the product, and translating it into the real life by the by an intelligent use of the labels with the technical capability you have allows my customers to manage their fleet more intelligently and more efficiently. Perfect. And we could slice by market, etc. If we provided labels here as well. I absolutely agree, Kashif. This is phenomenal. And, and during Jorge's demo, we witnessed the power of labels and then the search extended in a global fashion. I think it'd be nice to show a new ACM 211 feature, 211 being the next release of uh, ACM to go GA uh, by the end of July. We have the ability to export these search results in a CSV capability. If that's something we could show in this demo, it'd be nice, Jorge. Right. So we can start from these data. Now, if you want to export a report of uh, your DUs in the zip code 90210. You can just search for it, and then you click the export a CSV oh. from here, and that will uh, generate a CSV file with just the data that you're looking on the screen. So if we go and open it, uh, don't think I'm sharing that uh, screen. but. But, but don't worry, it will come up. And Jorge, it, I guess this is your saved search, right? You began from us. So if you save, if you click on save search, this search will be saved. Correct. Yeah. If this is something you want to see on a regular basis, you don't need to type all the search criteria. You come here and make it your safe search. And now you have the use in Malibu. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Now, every time you come back to search, you just click on it and you can come back here quickly. Very usable for uh, and, and, and very, very useful to manage a fleet of DUs uh, in the scale of thousands or tens of thousands. So you can use the safe searches to create here basically your own dashboard of the things that you care about on a regular basis. Yeah, this caters to many personas, right, in the ops world, whether it's the, the SRE ops admin keeping the lights on, working in here, and then drilling into a specific region, applying things to that area uh, through the labels, as, as Kashif uh, was, was suggesting could be done. And then also taking these results and handing them to another persona who may have to uh, share those results with another team, right, not actually working the, the board themselves, but being able to consume that data elsewhere. In a, in a global view of your fleet is really powerful to be the, able to do this in a single pane. Right. And now, now that we have got the next best thing to having a house in Malibu, look at the deals in Malibu. <laughs> Easier than, than having a house. Kashif, what, what should we do next in the series? So, uh, so now that we have, we have seen how you can view things, I want to understand a little bit more on how I can do some operations on these things. How can... How can we apply policies and um, and 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 do some operations on a subset of these? So, so we, I mean, I, I was thinking we can go two ways. One is to see how we can deploy things using the global hub and the ZTP and the Talam and all that stuff. Or the other thing we could so, see is how this is turning out to be an operation. So we have a fleet of DUs. We have deployed DUs and CUs. We have a fleet of clusters. We have deployed policies that are managing. How much of the fleet is compliant? How many clusters are non-compliant? How how you know? Uh, how many policies are not compliant? Looking at a global level. So we have these two choices. So which one do you think we go next? Show the operational views where we show the compliance across the. So I believe both are important. Um, yes. but we'll we'll probably do the deployment at a later time. But for now, let's focus on in the next one on how we can see compliance and the, and the operations across the fleet. Fantastic. Fantastic. Then let's tee that up for the next session. Thanks a lot, right. folks. Thank, Thank you all.